it's another beautiful evening once again friends welcome to the potter's gate online broadcast tonight once again we're going to continue to look into one of the most interesting subjects in the scripture the book of daniel the lord really has been speaking to us it's been a great journey so far today we are going to be looking into chapter 9 and i believe this chapter has a lot in you know in stock for us this chapter is so packed that it defines the very destiny of creation and of course you know the body of christ uh, most people base their prophetic you know uh, a scope on daniel's chapter 9 of course we're going to be seeing what the spirit of the lord is going to be unpacking all right tonight as we engage this book we pray tonight that the lord will open our eyes of understanding and he will illuminate us that he will give us grace insight that will be more furnished, will be more prepared, will be more aligned to the heart of God. So welcome tonight. Join me as we continue to advance the heart of God. You're welcome. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We rejoice in your voice tonight. We rejoice in your speakings. We come once again with a heart of humility. We ask that you'll open our understanding, that you'll give us illumination, that you'll give us insight, that you'll give us a way into this revelation. Illuminate our minds, our thoughts. Take us deeper. Take us higher. Bring us to the broad path of the things of your spirit. Allow us once again to become students as we speak to us of issues that, that relate to our day. <clears throat> as you open us to chapters in this eternal book, leading us to the path of truth and revelation so we know how to manage our life, live our life within the confines of the tightness of your word. I pray tonight, oh God, that you will lead us further. <clears throat> You will bring us higher, O oh God, in understanding, in revelation, to your will, to your purpose. Open this book to us. Help us to see beyond tradition, beyond the ideas of men. What are you saying to us? What are you saying to your church? What do you demand of us? What do you expect of us to know? Indeed, we live our life by revelation. Let the revelation of this book once again align us. Help us to become more like Christ. Help us to become more ready and prepared as watchmen. May your kingdom once again come. Teach us how to wait like watchmen. Grant us the spirit, the grace of Daniel so we can be truly ready, prepared, furnished. Position us, O oh God, so we can see from afar and also from near. We thank you. Holy Spirit, you are our teacher. Teach us. Jesus said, when you come, you will teach us all truth. You will lead us into all truth. It's our prayer tonight that you will lead us into all truth. That you grant us access. That you will quiet in our hearts. You bring us to the place of knowledge. To the place where we can feed, yes, on the things that have been prepared for us on the table. I thank you tonight. I pray for my brothers and sisters everyone anyone out there whom your spirit have drawn to the table to come partake of this meal may this word may this food oh god yes bring us oh god into clarity into understanding may we oh god understand your demand for our day may we understand your voice for our time may your spirit enlighten us illuminate us grant us once again understanding Open our mind to comprehend the things that you're saying so that you, O oh God, be glorified. Yes, so you can have a church in the earth without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish. A church mature in the spirit of revelation. A church equipped in the understanding of wisdom. Build us, empower us, energize us to the glory of your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, tonight, friends, once again, I want to welcome you to uh, the Porter's Gate. We are 
engage in chapter 9 tonight of the book of Daniel. Uh, this presentation has been such a blessing to me in particular. I don't know about you, but this is one uh, material that has continued to be a blessing. And we thank God for the response, particularly, you know, online, the, the kinds of response that we've been getting. I, 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 I'm really grateful that God is using this material to really uh, uh, steer and awaken the hearts of people across, particularly, you know, from United States, amazingly. We have a, we've had a lot of people from United States who are joining, commenting on what the Spirit of the Lord is really opening their minds and understanding into in this uh, uh, series that we have done. Of course, not by might, not by power. So if you're joining tonight, wherever you're joining from, stay in connection with what the Lord is saying. It's going to continue to build you, empower you. Uh, this is not a preaching session. This is a teaching or a, a, a segment. So uh, we, we want to believe that God will give us, particularly in the seasons that we're living where the church all right, has been so captured by the spirit of entertainment that if, they, <clears throat> if the gospel, if the message is not entertaining, you know, people really don't uh, show interest. Well, we are not in that order. Our, our, our concept, our calling is to equip, is to build. And you know that to build, you need to sit down. They say, who wants to build a house? That's what we are seeking to do. That will not first sit down to count the cost. So we are counting the cost of the truth, of the vision, of the revelation, of the knowledge, of the wisdom that is required of us in our day. All right, this is a place where the wise, yes, you know, respond to the heart of God. So if you're wise in heart and you're seeking wisdom, you will be part of what the Lord is doing. Okay, many are called, the scripture says, many are called, but few are chosen. Few are chosen. So tonight, we want to see, we want to continue, all right, to allow the Lord to give us insights into the concept of how to build. Yes, we've been talking about the emergence of the Daniel's church and so far so good. I believe God really is emerging some a, a company of remnants whose, who, whose life and whose attitude, you know, are reflecting the value system of men and women who has gone ahead of them, whose life has become, if you will, a blueprint, a reflection, a standard of heaven's pattern and desire in the earth. There is a church that will bring forth the counsel of God, either we like it or not. There is a church that will manifest the glory of God in the earth. There is a church that will manifest the intentions of God in the earth. So we have the choice to either be part of that church or to sit on the fence and continue to, you know, just watch and, and look and, you know, see what's going on. No, we want to participate. God has called us to participate. And I see myself as key instrument to what God is doing as he continues to shape and engage his church. So uh, even if no one is out there to listen to me, my life will continue to reflect a value system that impacts the, 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 the formation of the third day church. Yes. So I thank God for the way God has really, you know, called me, built me and equipped me. You know, I thank God that I want to see that many would join what we're doing. But the truth is, if no one joins, I will still be able to do what God has called me to do. That is the kind of, you know, capacity, knowledge, wisdom, heaven has built in me. And that is why, uh, you know, we really don't wait for the whole world, you know, to, to listen before we do what we need to do. We respond as long as there's one, two, three out there. Yes, that is the mindset. Jesus said, you know, where two or three are gathered in my name. And that speaks beyond numbers. That speaks to heart condition. That speaks to attitude. All right? Uh, you know, people say, where two or three? No, God is not where two or three. He is where two or three are gathered. As long as their heart can be knitted together in, in unison to the prophetic demand that he desires in the earth. We have, we have seen that 
the Lord, amen, is not short, amen, in saving nation by, you know, by, by, you know, by few. So we thank God for the attitude the Lord is building in us, for the kinds of value system heaven, amen, is, 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 is shaping on our platform. So it's an honor to have you out there. If you're there listening, if you've joined us, welcome. Tonight, we will continue to allow the Lord, amen, to teach us, to instruct us, and to inform us. Like I said, we're in Daniel's chapter 9, and we want to continue to look into the heart of God. This is a beautiful, uh, you know, chapter. A lot of us, if you are a minister, I'm sure we've preached around it, we've talked about it, but we want to see some of these things from, a, you know, a, 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 a theological, doctrinal, and also, you know, prophetic perspective and also from you know a, a, a teaching you know a, a concept because these are all the instruments that we need in order to engage you know the the, the call of God for this season uh, you know I, I was asked to you know review you know one of my material you know today you know and one of the things that one you know is looking into is how do we begin to enter into the scope of what the Lord is demanding and requiring of us, particularly in this season where there's a different kind of attitude, there's a different kind of belief system. You know, they, they, they say the, 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 the listening span of people today is quite low. So you have to do everything quick and fast. And I was engaging with that saying, no, we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that kind of attitude. We want people who really want to sit, who understand the importance of what the Lord is saying. If we have to rush everything, if if everything has to be microwave, then we're in trouble. All right? They say you have to catch the attention of the people the, the very first five seconds. If you're selling something, if you can't catch the attention of the people between five seconds, you've lost them. Then that's a lost generation to me. That's the truth. That is a lost generation. We we must not continue to bow to the narrative of the day, to the narrative of the market, you know, a, a system. The market will tell you, no, whatever you're selling, you have to sell it quick and fast, the first five seconds. I will sell anything under five seconds. <laughs> Who does? At least not in the kingdom. Not in the kingdom. So I'm beginning to challenge certain narrative. It's not meant for everybody. It's meant for those who really want. If you want something. You know back in the days. I mean this just thought comes to my mind. You know back in the day. There's there's a lady that you're eyeing as a guy. There's a lady you're eyeing. And you, you you know how long it took for you to even begin to get that lady to notice you. And after that lady notices you. Then it's like she doesn't know you. But you kept, you were persistent. (laughs) You are anticipating, you are persistent. Because you know what you want. Who goes into, you know, a restaurant, you want to really eat good meal. But you just want it, you want to enter and then the next second you're out of the, you're out of the place with food. No, it doesn't work like that. Those are narratives we have to stop, we have to begin to challenge, all right? Because those narratives are pushing the church, pushing us. And that's why you have all these kind of churches today where it is, you know, 30 minutes, you know, service, you know. How do you build people? How do you equip people? How do you empower people, you know, with those short, you know, a span of time? No, no, we have to begin to tell ourselves, if we want something, we need to really, yes, make out time for it. You see how long it took me to prepare, you know, uh, uh, this, this, this uh, message, this series, this presentation. It's taken me, if only you know the time. I've been preparing for this particular, you know, presentation since morning. Now I went to, you know, have a rest. I had to get up again continue to just make sure that everything is an, is in alignment yes because we want to feed our spirit we want to feed our life we and if you want to feed you need all right to be patient yes we need to be patient yes so if you know the importance of what we're talking about what the spirit of god is is demanding and requiring of the church with the kind of change that we need if you look at the the level of damage that we're dealing with in the body of christ you know that we can't rush into this is not hit and run we have to be deliberate this is a concept of nehemiah we must be ready to truly 
build. We want to build. You know, you can't rush a building when, when, when it comes to building. You can't rush it. No matter how all your materials are ready, you have to allow, you understand, yes, nature to take its course. When you start laying blocks, they must dry before you start laying another layer, before you start building something else, or else you're going to have all your house collapsing on you. I'm sure somebody just need to hear that. <laughs> You can't, certain things, we can't rush it. We can't, you know, we can't, we can't fast track it. No. It's the culture of the kingdom. So welcome guys, wherever you are this evening, all the men of God joining us, I salute you. Appreciate the call of God, the grace of God in your life. Husband, wife joining us. May the Lord continue to empower you, grant you grace, you know, wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Any young person joining us there, want to say kudos to you welcome we believe god for great things so you become the next generation of the daniels that we are seeking for in our time all right let's get into the business of the day all right so we're dealing with daniel's chapter 9 daniel's prayer and the prophecy of the 70 weeks i had to pray you know to the lord to give me you know greater insight beyond just you know uh, um, the theological framework that you know one already has about some of this thing that that's another thing that I believe men of God you know need to be praying for there are certain framework belief system that theology has built within our mind when it comes to the word of God when it comes to particularly in you know in the arena of prophecy and all of that but let's see what the spirit of the lord is saying so uh, at the book of daniel basically is divided chapter 9 is divided into two, two chapters but let's go into the slide all right uh, um let's see how far we can go this chapter is a uh, pivotal or important to biblical prophecy offering a timeline that many sees as as spanning from daniel's time to the first coming of christ and even to the end time, it challenges the church to offer, uh, uh, to it challenges the church to engage in deep, you know, uh, uh, scriptural, informed prayer for their nations. Remember, what I've also done is to inculcate, you know, the material into, you know, the days that we live in. So we're not just dealing with something that is theological. I try to, you know. I look at what God have said, what he's saying in that scripture and how we can apply them all right, to our own life today. Okay, yeah, as much as the book is prophetic, but like I always say, remember, a prophecy is an ongoing, unfolding, you know, reality, you know, of, yes, the heart of God, the mind of God. So we can have partial prophecy, you know, prophecy being fulfilled, not fully fulfilled, all right so we are in the period where we're seeing prophecies being fulfilled but that's not fully that's not fully mature you know mature you know so and that's one of the things we're going to but particularly you're going to be seeing in daniel's chapter 9 all right so let's continue this uh, uh the, the material the, the the chapter challenges the church to engage in deep <clears throat> scriptural informed prayer for their nation and to live with the awareness of god's overarching plan for history all right so let's quickly look at you know some concept in relating to the summary daniel under understanding all right from this is very important from jeremiah's prophecy we're going to see how daniel was able to link all right he was able to link his engagement to this uh attitude that you know he began to engage in terms of the prophecy all right daniel was able to link that to you know the prophecy of jeremiah i, I found that very fascinating that after 70 years god said he was going to revisit his people all right in the land of bondage in the land of uh, uh, babylon to return them i mean i found that very fascinating uh, I, I, you know some some uh, theologians will tell you that daniel was quite young of course when they were captured all right some will tell you that daniel was about 20 something some will say maybe 30 or 20 something but certainly daniel was you know young when he was taken 
but we can see that he had knowledge of the prophecy. It's amazing. And he was tracking. Like we're going to read from Daniel chapter 2. He understood by the books. He understand. He understood, you know, uh, uh, by the writings. This, this, this immediately calls us, amen, that we must be students of the scripture. We must be tracking the heart of God. Regardless of the state, regardless of where we are, regardless of the condition. He was in Babylon. He was in bondage. He was in exile. All right. But he had something that he was able to anchor his faith upon that well, one day this thing, you understand, is going to end. And he was working with, you know, the prophetic timeline. I found that very, you know, interesting. And I think that's the same attitude many of us should have today. Because when you look around, particularly, you know, in relating to the state of the church, you want to ask yourself, is there any hope for the church? Is there any hope for us? When you look at how, you know, these merchants, when you look at how, you know, this beast-like of a spirit seem to have almost swallowed, you understand, the church, you know, the, the, the true church. You, 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 sometimes you want to ask yourself, are there true voice out there? Yes, they are, but they are very small because, you know, the, the, the charlatans and the merchants, you know, have become the face of the church. It's like we're living in captivity. And we need to have that mindset of a Daniel that is tracking God's prophetic timeline. That this thing has, you understand? Yes, you know, a, 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 an ending date after 70 years. Isn't that hopeful? I think that is hopeful. That after 70 years, that God or that. The fact that people are doing what they're doing. The fact that the nation are doing what they're doing. The fact that they actually think they're winning. That, you know, certain politicians think that they're in charge. You know, certain, you know, powerful people think they're in control. That God actually has a, you know, he has a timeline. He has a date line. All right. That all of this nonsense is going to end. And we have to have that kind of a mindset of a Daniel, all right, that is tracking, that we are not consumed, amen, by the perversion, that we are not swallowed up, amen. Sorry, I just need to emphasize, I just found this very, you know, fascinating to emphasize that, all right, that, you know, at the end of the day, there is a, there is a period where God says, okay, it's over. And then we can have, you know, a, a company in the earth, like a Daniel, that, then begin to pray, begin to engage heaven, begin to make, you know, demand on God and say, well, 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 the time you've set for this thing to end has come and began to pray. I mean, I've been, I think I've listened to Daniel's prayer close to three times today. You know, just listening to, you know, this man pray, I think that is just, you know, amazing. All right, let's continue. So Daniel Understanding from Jeremiah's prophecy that the exile, all right, is ex the, the exile will, will last 70 years. That's a long time. I mean, that's a long time to forget. That's a long time, you know, to, <laughs> sorry, I just have to go back. It's a long time to, to feel this courage. 70 years is a long time to say, Sarah, Sarah, what will be, will be. This God, I don't know. I don't think anything's going to come out of this. Let's just, you know, accept, accept our lot. Let's just, you know, give in. Just as you and I know that there were priests, all right, who were captured, swallowed up, who were, you know, uh, uh, assimilated into the very nature and culture of Babylon. Even though God told them, marry in the land, you understand, you know, uh, uh, do business there, do whatever you want to do. But God did not say get assimilated. You understand? God never told them to get assimilated. And there were priests who were caught up, who were, who forgot, you know, that they were priests in Babylon. And before we know it, they could not, they could not be found again in the genealogy of the priesthood. Ah, I used to, I used to, you know, you know, crack that scripture years back. They could no longer, in the time that they returned to Jerusalem, you understand, for the restoration of the, the, the temple, excuse me, uh, the altar and all of that. The Bible says there were people who were no longer found. Their name could not be found in the genealogy. May that not be our portion. So, Daniel's chapter, you know, cha you know, uh, um, 
all right let's let's read on so the angel gabriel appeared and gave daniel the prophecy of the 70 weeks in fact maybe i should just quickly go to uh, daniel's chapter 9 and let's just uh quickly do some reading in the first year of Darius son of Atensis, but now we've entered the third you know ruler ruling that excuse me ruling you know babylon we've entered the, the third we started with nebuchadnezzar then it was his son belshazzar now they're introducing us to darius all right by the time we're, we're done you're gonna i think we're gonna be dealing with the fourth ruler but here the scripture says in the first year of darius son of you know Athaxis, a king of uh, uh, Medi, the scripture says, who was made ruler over, you know, uh, at the Babylonian kingdom. So you can see, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures. I, Daniel, understood from the scriptures. Scripture can give us understanding. Scripture can give us insight. Scripture can give us direction. Scripture can instruct us. And of course, that's what the scripture is designed to do. Scripture can instruct us such that we know how to track. We know how to interact. We know how to position ourselves. Scripture can give us prophetic timeline. Scripture can, you know, allow us, amen, to shift in terms of how we interact. In terms of relationship. In terms of, amen, yeah, the exit of a face, of a ministry, a move. I mean, I have I have exit several faces of my own calling. I mean, what I know today, where I am today, what I'm preaching today, what I'm teaching today, my emphasis today was not what, you know, I was, you know, emphasizing 20, 30 years ago as a minister. No, certainly not. But all of that is through engaging scripture. I just thought that is something that, you know, one need to understand. The Bible says, I, Daniel, understood from the scripture, according to the word of the Lord given to Jeremiah the prophet, that the desolation of Jerusalem will last 70 years. So I, I turned. Can you say that? That's what scripture tells us to do. We turn. It says, so that I turned to the Lord God and pleaded, all right, with, with him in prayer. And this is what I keep saying that we don't just pray what comes to our mind. We pray the mind of God. We pray the scripture. We pray the intentions of God. We pray what the spirit of God, you understand? Yes, it's emphasizing. And this is our key scripture. All right. Uh, um, if you look at the, the key scripture, yeah, it's supposed to be Daniel. I think I made a mistake. What I put there is Daniel 2.2. Two, two, two. No, it's supposed to be Daniel 9.2. You understand? In the first year of the reign, I, Daniel, understood from the scripture. So if we're not tracking the scripture, we cannot track prophetic timeline. That's very important. If we're not tracking scripture, we cannot understand prophetic timeline. We cannot understand the heart of God. Remember that the scripture introduces us, amen, to the heart of God. We can't know the mind of God without understanding scripture. All right? So he said, I understood all right, according to the word of the Lord given to prophet Jeremiah, we have to be custodians. We have to be, amen, keepers of prophetic words. If God has given us a prophetic word or God has given our nation, God has given our community, we need to, amen, keep them. We need to keep reminding ourselves. Let's not give up and say, well, we've been praying, nothing happened. No, there's a timeline where the word of God, where the intentions of God come to fruition because God also, all right, I, I'm, wants to see certain things grow and mature in our life right now as i'm speaking right now there is a there are certain prophetic words that are coming to maturation in your life in your family in the body of christ amen uh, you know in relating to you know global affairs scripture is alive so prophecy prophecies are alive there are prophecies it's like they're cooking them it's like that thing is boiling you understand yes it's going to reach the boiling point. When you reach the boiling point, you're going to start to see manifestation. So let's not fold our hand. Just think, oh, nothing is happening. Something is happening. And it's important that we understand. We have that mindset. It may be quiet. You know, things may look quiet. Yes, there are seasons where things look quiet in our life. There are seasons where God, all God wants you to do is just to teach in your church. If you're a man of God, just God, God just wants you to teach. And there's no movement. There's no cutting, moving. There's no shaking. There's no noise. Just keep teaching. Just keep teaching, building. Maybe your family, you know. 
And when the time comes where certain things that you have thought, amen, have reached, you know, certain boiling point, suddenly you begin to see, you know, some moving, some shaking, some, you know, impression. You, you know how this thing works. That's very important. So he said, I, I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting and in sackcloth and in ashes. Verse 4 says, I pray to the Lord God and confess, Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenants of love with those whom he loves and keeps his commandment. We have, we have seen. Now, I want you to note the word of Daniel. This is Daniel pleading. Daniel is showing us the spirit, the ministry of intercession here. All right. Please just pardon me as I give some insight, some, you know, a context to what we're dealing with, because that's the whole essence. I'm, I, just, I don't just want to be reading things so that, well, you just hear. After all, you can do that by yourself. We need to also engage the spirit of what God is saying to us. All right. So he said, he said, we have, we have seen not how he involved himself. We all know that Daniel was a righteous man. All right. He's like Noah. All right. Daniel was like Noah. But look at what, you know, how, look at how Daniel sprang. We have seen. And that's very important in the spirit of intercession. One of the things I know God has called me and has, has given to me, of course, which anybody out there can testify of, is the spirit. I have a very strong spirit of intercession. I love, I, I love to pray for, you know, nations, community, you know, society, the body of Christ. Yes. And when you do that, you have to plunge yourself. You have to see yourself. You understand? You have to involve yourself. You can't be praying outside. You have to be praying within. You have to be praying among them we have seen it says we you know we, we have been wicked and have been rebellion we have turned away from your command and laws we have can you see the we 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 involved himself it didn't say they we have not listened to your servant the prophets who spoke in your name to our kings our princes and our ancestors and to all the people of the land. Those are the things you see. All right. Those are the ministry. You see the focus of how Daniel expressed the focus of the, of the prophets. All right. It says, we have not listened to the prophets who are supposed to be speaking, who spoke to the kings, to the prince, to our ancestors and to all the people of the land. Yes. No limitation, no jurisdiction. Lord, you, you are righteous, but this day we, we are covered with shame. This is 70 years after. This is 70 years. These people have grown. They've been all kinds of God knows what. You understand? But Daniel was still able to bring the people to that point of what brought them to the land of you know, bondage. It's amazing. Lord, you are righteous. But this day, we are covered with shame. The people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, both near and far, in all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. And our kings and our prince and our ancestors are covered with shame. Lord, because we have sinned against, against you. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving. Even though we have rebelled against you, we have not obeyed the Lord our God or keep the laws he gave us through his servant, the prophets. All Israel have transgressed your laws and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore, the curse, therefore the curse and sworn judgment written in the law of Moses can you see? This guy is tracking. This guy knows the word from Je Je Jeremiah. is tracking Moses now. He understands in the heart of God. He understands the people. You see why Daniel was so important to God. You see why Daniel is regarded as you know, one who has a, a, a standing before God. In fact, you will hear Gabriel and Michael declare it. You who have, you understand, who, who have such an important standing before the Lord. That's what they declare about Daniel. Because this guy was tracking. He didn't forget. 
He didn't throw away the things that has been said or spoken, you understand, by his forefathers, you know, by his uh, 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 elders. No, he, 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 he knew those things and he called those things, all right, to mind. Therefore, the curse swung in judgment written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, who has poured out, excuse me, has been poured out on us because you have seen because we have seen against you. In other words, the reason why we are here is because we did not listen to what Jeremiah said, to what Moses written down, and the, the curse, the judgment that were written in the book of Moses, or that Moses, you know, uh, penned down against those who will stand against you has come upon us. That's why he's saying. Therefore, the curse and sworn judgment written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us. That's the truth. We need to remind ourselves that when we go against the laws of God, when we go against the values, the principles of God, we will be judged. Because we have sinned against you, you have, you have fulfilled the word spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing us great disaster. Ah, People don't want to hear that today. We just want the blessing. We just want the grace. We just want, you know, the you know whatever we want. You understand? But the things of God are related to, you know, the condition. Under the whole heaven, nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem. Just as it is written in the law of Moses, all the disasters has come on us, yet... We have not sought the favor of the Lord our God by turning from our sins and giving attention to your truth. The Lord did not hesitate to bring the disaster on us. For the Lord our God is righteous in everything he does. Yet we have not obeyed him. Now Lord our God who brought, excuse me, now Lord our God who brought your people out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Who, who, who has made for yourself a name that endures to this day? We've sinned. We've done wrong. Lord, in keeping with all your righteous act, turn away. Turn away your anger and your wrath from Jerusalem, your city, your holy hill, our sins and the iniquities of our ancestors have made Jerusalem and your people an object of scorn. To all those around us now, our God, hear the prayer and the petition of your servant. For your sake, Lord, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary. Give ear, our God, and hear. Open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name. We do not make request of you because we are righteous. No, but because of our, but because of your great mercy, Lord, listen. Lord, forgive. Lord, hear and act for your sake. My God, do not delay because your city and your people bear your name. This is Daniel's prayer. Amazing prayer. Amazing prayer. All right, so that is the first part of you understand, you know, the chapter nine of Daniel, which we've called you know the Daniel's prayer. The chapter two then begin, all right, from excuse me, the second part then begin from uh, verse twenty. But let's let's go into our uh, um, into the slide. So this chapter, like we say, is the is uh, this. Ch- chapter provide insight into unseen spiritual reality that influences a world event challenging you know a purely materialistic worldview of course all right let's let's look at some things uh we said the chapter can be divided into two main parts okay so you see the first that's the first part that i've just read that ended in chapter uh, excuse me verse 19 all right that's daniel's prayer all right so what you're going to be seeing is Gabriel, all right, Gabriel's prophecy of 70 weeks. All right, we're going to see that from uh, uh, chapter, uh, excuse me, uh, verse 20 to 27. 
that will be the next uh, uh, um, second session that we're going to be seeing in relating to Daniel uh, chapter 9. Daniel began by praying for his people, confessing their sins and asking God for mercy in response. Okay, in response, the angel Gabriel appeared. You will notice that two angels appear to, to Daniel. I mean, and these are these are the great veterans. These are the archangels. You see Gabriel come. The next time you're going to hear is Michael himself coming. It's amazing. I'm looking at Daniel and saying, God, this guy has a standing. He's got a favor. I want this kind of life. I want this kind of interaction. And when they were describing Michael, you actually thought they were describing Jesus. It's amazing. If, if, if one is not tracking, if you are not tracking the heart of God, you would actually think they were describing Jesus before you realize that. No, it was actually Michael they're describing. Ah, scripture. I love God. Come on, let's go. Daniel began by praying for his people, confessing their sins and asking for God's mercy. In response, the angel Gabriel, Gabriel is a messenger. Okay, it brings God's message. The angel Gabriel appears and gives Daniel a prophecy about the future of Israel and the coming of the Messiah. It, it, it just imagine the condition, the level, the favor, the kind of you know spiritual uh, uh, resource, you know, capacity that Daniel. All right, please beyond just this uh, 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 um, presentation, I need you to pick into the spirit of what we are talking about because that is what. You know, we, we you know we want to extract, and this is one of the things that I actually shared yesterday. <clears throat> Excuse me. Remember, yesterday I was speaking on anticipation. If we're not anticipating to enter, to to walk in, to receive, Amen, to become the Daniel of our time, it's not going to happen. The reason why they could engage Daniel is because they saw that he was ready. In the midst of his business in the palace, he still had time for God. <clears throat> Excuse me. He still had time for God. He still had time to pray. He still had time to respond. Amen. He still had time to turn to God. I think that is fascinating. I think that is the kind of, you know, spirituality the Lord is calling us into. I know you're busy and we all can, you know, hide behind business of the day. But you see, I believe that, you know, the sense of business has to do with the condition of our hearts. Not really what we're doing. Because Nehemiah was busy. I mean, there was no one as busy as Jesus. But guess what? Jesus still had time, amen, to talk to his father, to relate with his father, to listen to his father, to know his father's mindset, to know what the Lord will, you know, what the father will have him do in every occasion. So we cannot live life and be overcome and be overwhelmed, you understand, by life. Then we are defeated, amen, in our spirituality. Very important point I'm making here because that is what is going to make us a Daniel's church, a Daniel's generation. It cannot be that we are, that the world can overwhelm us, you know, like the children of Israel in the land of Egypt. They were so overwhelmed by building pyramid until they forgot their God, until they forgot their name, until they forgot their identity, until... They began to see amen, Egypt as the only source. Are, are you getting it? And that is the same game the devil is playing today. Keep them busy. Continue to build pyramid. Continue to build. We give you more money. We give you as long as you don't have time for God and the things of God. And that is something we are looking into. Daniel, after 70 years in, the, in exile, that seven you know, decade, he was able to track and remember the this is the time to pray. This is the time to talk to God about this thing. Wow. I just find that fascinating. I find that very important. All right, friends. So, this is very important. Let's quickly look at some, you know, key points here. Excuse me. Excuse me. Let's quickly look at some life application for our, our today's our, our church. The power of intercession for prayer. I've spoken about that. I've been speaking about that. Daniel's, you know, heartfelt prayer for his people. We have to have a heart, all right? 
yes, to pray, to intercede for the state of the church, for, amen, the people of God, for the church of the Lord. Yes, whatever we want to call it, the ecclesia, the bride of Christ, you know, sons, whatever you want to call it, pray for the body of Christ. Pray for the church. Because that is really what matters to God. Your heart, amen, in intercession, in prayer, is really what qualifies and defines, you understand, your position and influence to the church. A lot of people are part of the body of Christ, but they don't have influence. You know why? Because they are not praying. They are not seeking. They are not interceding. They are not intercepting. They are not, you understand, yes, longing. They don't have a burden for the body. They don't. Our burden for the church is not just about doctrine, it's also about intercession. We must be a people that pray, all right? We've got to be able to balance intercession and doctrine together so that we can have, you understand, yes, what I would call a spiritual pendulum. Very important. Daniel's heartfelt prayer for his people demonstrates demonstrates the importance of intercession not just prayer there's a difference between prayer and intercession when you stand in intercession you take the place of that person you take the position in fact you take you understand the the position of the weakness and the infirmity of that person that is intercession all right confession and repentance Daniel's prayer include confession of the national sin, reminding the church of the need for corporate repentance. It's not just one, no, we repent on behalf of the entire body. All right? Some of the rhetorics today I hear from, you know, some quarters in the body of Christ is like, no, no, they are on their own. We are not part of that nonsense they are doing. We are all part of it. We are all part of it. <clears throat> Someone say, oh, no, no. You know, it's, 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 it's the, the church of the Lord is not captured. It's the church of God knows where it's captured. No, some part of the church of the Lord is captured. That's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth. And that's the attitude we must have. Because if it's, well, it is them against, it is us against them or them against us, then we really don't have the heart of intercession. When I look at and I hear and I read of every man of God that is falling and the ministry shutting down in America, I weep. I literally weep for them. You know why? Because, you know, those people there are my brothers and my sisters. When I look at what is going on, the lies, the perversion, you know, the, the, the ungodliness going on in the body of Christ. Or we can say, well, that's not the body. It is the body of Christ. Because, you know, even in the days of our Lord Jesus, Jesus had, amen, Judas as part of his body. You know, it's so convenient to say, no, no, we're, they're not part of us. We're not part of them. You lie. You have to look at all those false churches. All the, If they were not preaching Christ, if they were not preaching go some gospel, if they were not doing things that relates to Christ... Would they be able to leer? Many of the people who sit in those churches, guess what? They love God. They wanted God. That's why they went there. So if you say, well, they're not part of us. We're not part of them. Those are just part of, you know, you know, the church of the God knows what. It doesn't make sense. And I understand what people are saying, but you understand. It's just an easy way to, you know, to, to, to run away, to shy away, you know, to demarcate ourselves. And that is not the gospel. That's Jesus, amen, left the 99 and went for that one. That one that was part of him, all right, that missed it, that ran away. Yes. What's the word? We must be people who must go after those who have backslidden, who have turned away from the Lord. And we have them. And many of them are very wealthy. Many of them are rich. Many of them are powerful. But guess what? They've lost their heart. They've lost their soul. Yes, many of them, as, except we're saying that people don't backslide again. Many of them are backsliding. There are many men of God that are backsliding. And I'm not talking about those who are into, who are 
diabolic. I'm not talking about those who, who Satan have sent, you know, to go and build things that look like the real thing. That's not what I'm, I'm talking about. People who began well, who started well, who were journey with the Lord. And at some point, you understand, they trip, they fell, and they, they, remain, they remain on the floor. And they continue to seek to pull other people down. Those people, we need to find a way of reaching them. And one area Daniel showed us is through prayer. We have sinned. He, he included himself. Not because he, he, had, he sinned, but he included himself. That is the spirit of intercession. I love that. Thank you, Father. All right. So, scriptural foundation for prayer. Daniel based his prayer on God's promise in scripture. Can you see that? That's what I've said earlier. We have to pray the scripture. We have to pray the word of God. Check what the scripture say. Let's use that to pray. Don't pray from your own mind. Don't pray your own feeling. Don't pray your own prejudice. Don't pray your own idea. Don't pray your superiority. You know, sometimes our prayer reflects you know, that we are better of those people where we are more superior than them. No. Pray the scripture. Pray what is in the scripture. Pray what God says. Pray what is revealed. Amen. Pray the attitude of of what God, amen, is revealing in the scripture. God delivered the body of Christ from pre prejudice. Daniel based his prayer on God's, you know, promises in scripture. Teaching us to grant our prayer in God's word. God, you know, then, point four, God's uh, our faithfulness to his promise. The prophecy reaffirms God's, you know, commitment to his covenant, encouraging us to trust in God's faithfulness. Quickly, let's look at Daniel 70 uh, uh, weeks, prophetic elements. The 70 weeks of prophecy is one of the most, you know, uh, uh, discussed prophetic passages in, 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 the, in the Bible. All right. So, excuse me. <clears throat> A period of um, 69 weeks, often interpreted as 480 years. From the decree to rebuild Jerusalem until the coming of the anointed one. So this will be the first phase, basically, that you know we, we see as prophetic fulfillment. Alright? So the, the, the prophecy that was given by Gabriel actually include you understand the coming of our lord jesus christ that was his first coming it's amazing the kind of things that they were revealing to daniel i think the only the, the, the next close person that received that kind of you know a masonic you know a, a prophetic word is you know prophet isaiah isaiah and daniel were two you know uh you know a, a prophetic uh, instrument that you can say carried that masonic you know a, a prophecy now when you read the, you read your prophecy you literally see you understand the involvement the coming of christ you understand yes in their prophecy and i think that is quite quite you know amazing so a period of 69 weeks that you the last week they will call the 70 weeks so the the the, the 60 light the 69 weeks cover i'm now i'm running ahead of my time Cover the first two fulfillment of the prophecy. The last week, of course, then speaks of that which has not really, you know, happened. So, uh, um, a period of 69 weeks often interpreted as, <clears throat> have you seen how they use weeks basically to reflect, you know, years? A day before the Lord is like a thousand years. A thousand years before the Lord is like a day. So, all of this, we have to understand the concept of you know, Bible language, Bible interpretation. We've been dealing with that from the beginning because that is the heart. If we don't understand all of that, there's no way we can really uh, uh, interact with scripture. Okay. Some people try to, you know, uh, avoid this. Uh, you know, there's nothing to avoid if you understand, you know, the principles and the framework that has been exp explained to us in terms of interacting with scripture, interpreting scripture. You understand? We we cannot we can't we cannot get it hundred percent right, but we can be very close. You understand? Because even Jesus Himself said, you know, in, in relating to the time of His coming, not even Him or the angels, no, except for the Father. But 
based on what we have seen in terms of how God speaks and how God interacts with us, all right, with types and shadows, amen, with symbolism, we can, you know, deduce certain principles and values that speaks to us, all right, that we can at least begin to near that environment of, you know, the fulfillment, yes, of biblical prophecy. And I think that is something that, you know, uh, is worth looking into. All right, so um, a period of 69 weeks often interpreted as uh, the 483 years from the decree to the rebuilding, all right, of Jerusalem until the coming. So we see that 70 years, the word uh, of the, the word through uh, Cyrus was okay, you've got to go back and rebuild. So there was a rebuilding, okay, and then of course we see. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then uh, the, the third pr pr prophecy that we're going to be seeing is uh, the cutting off of the anointed one. Or if you will, you know, the crucifying of the anointed one, which is Jesus himself. The final week, that speaks to the final week. A cup, you know, uh, uh, the, the final week involving a covenant and a cessation of sacrifice. Now, let's go further. All right, we're still looking at the 70 weeks. The, the prophecy of the 70 weeks of Dana is one of the most significant and debated prophecy. All right. The 70 weeks or seven weeks. You see what I've done now? The first one that I read gives us an insight. This one, you know, this, uh, uh, um, this phase gives us even a clearer insight. All right. The 70 weeks are what they would define as, you know, uh, as sevens. Sevens. Some, you know, some theologians would define these 70 weeks as sevens. Or sevens of sevens. All right. I decreed, all right. So, Gabriel is speaking in sevens. And of course, we understand that seven will represent, you know, numbers of what? Perfection. When seasons and when seasons begin, very important. So we're not literally looking at number seven or the term seventy. This 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 is symbolic. Seven seventy or a, a symbolic of how God, you know, you know, a, a conclude, initiates, starts something and concludes it. All right. So. If we add the way God is moving in terms of his in terms of perfection, seven, 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 you you you're heading to us an understanding of how God, you understand, communicates his prophetic timeline to us. So I'm just saying, don't be don't don't be too carried away and too too moved by you know the 70 weeks. That is a way of God speaking. Remember, uh, there was a time I said in, in the Hebrew term. You know, numbers have got values, just as you know, words also carry you know a, a numerical values. Very important. All right, if we begin to dig dig deep into you know the way you know the the, the Hebrew words you understand uh, uh, or the Hebrew language you know communicates, you 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 will be surprised that he, Hebrew alphabet or uh, you know Hebrew alphabet or Hebrew numbers are you know communications of of words they they are they, they need to be uh, you know encoded because they are coded basically when god speaks of seven he's speaking of you know a time span a time span all right so let's continue seven you know uh, uh, 70 weeks or sevens are decreed for daniel's people and the holy city of jerusalem these weeks Imagine weeks are speaking into years. So if you use your modern way of trying to understand what they were saying to Daniel, you will be like, you'll be confused. But there's no confusion. We just need to understand biblical language. Just as, amen, we have human language that is what is known as biblical language. And if we don't know biblical language, we try to use our modern term, our human understanding to try to interpret scripture. We go into error. We fall into error. And that's why a lot of people today, you know, are falling into error because they are trying to use their own human wisdom, human understanding. In fact, they're trying to use the knowledge they've, they've acquired from the, the, from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to try to interpret 
interpret okay something that is spiritual you have you will end up in you know in a state of error if you're not in a state of error you will not be giving the people the full understanding the full dimension of what god is saying because you have not studied it you have not learned it you know it's like somebody who's trying to speak a language that they've not learned you know you know a bit of it but you know somebody listen to you speaking that language they say oh no, no you are you are mothering you are killing this language why because you know uh, you've not really learned you know the hardcore the the, the real you know a, a meaning of the language so i mean like my language now the yoruba language one one word you, you understand can be meaning three three four five you know uh, 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 you know things and it all depends on your, your the tonation. You know, it all depends on the tonation, and it's the same that, in fact, that applies to the you know to the Hebrew language. So, a language is something that needs to be studied. In fact, when you go to you know some of the uh, Bible school, seminary, theological school, there is a course on its own that speaks to language interpretation in terms of scriptures. Because I did a bit of that. That's why I can tell you that. You know, you just, you, you, you study linguistic. That's part of linguistic. So many of our pastors, our leaders today, really have not done well in terms of, you know, language understanding and handling the scripture. So we just use our own brain. We use, you know, our vernacular. You understand? Yes. To engage the things of God. And oftentimes, we, we really do injustice to the word of God. All right. So 70, yes, uh, uh, 70 weeks or sevens are decreed for Daniel, for the people and the holy city. These weeks are generally interpreted as, listen to this, as 70, 70 sets of seven. I just explained that the 70 sets of seven, all right, a time frame of the beginning and the finishing of God's prophetic agenda or intention within human realm. So we can be rest assured that, you know, the, the word seven, of course, speaks of birthing is the beginning of a note, all right, and the the end of a note and the beginning. You know, when you when you start, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. By the time you eat the last note, okay, you want to begin another note. That note eight is starting from another octave of seven. So it's seven, but from, you know, a higher note. It's still seven, but that seven is a higher note. There's no eight. There's no eight key. It's it's that that eight key is seven, but high. Yes, do re mi fa sol la ti do. Do re mi fa sol la ti do. It's the same principle. Sorry, my voice. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a good, you know, a, 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 a singer. But at least I have an understanding of what they are saying. You know. It, 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 the, the, the keyboard, you know, a, a note are in seven, seven, sevens of sevens. Each seven has got its own octave. You understand? Yes. I hope that is a bit clear to us because it's the same principle. You can apply that musical principle, all right, to even prophetic understanding, all right. These weeks are generally interpreted as 70 sets of seven, of seven years. Totally, did you see this one say 490 years? The prophecy outline events include the rebuilding. So those are the, all those sevens speaks of, you understand, certain events. All of the seven speaks of events that will be taking place within, all right, the 70s, all right? The prophecy outline event include the rebuilding of Jerusalem 1, the coming of the Messiah 2, and a final week of tribulation 3. 
Very important. So we see that all those 70 that culminated into 490 years, all right, are three major prophetic, you know, uh, 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 outlines. And of course, we know that within those, you know, out, three major prophetic outlines, there are other sub sub prophetic fulfillments, if I may you put it that way. The, you understand? Yes. There are, there are, you see, so you have a major prophetic outline, but within those major prophetic outline, there are other little smaller prophetic fulfillment because the activities of God, amen, are captured in prophetic spirit, amen. Jesus, amen, the Bible says, you know, uh, the testimony of Jesus is what is the spirit of prophecy. So everything that Jesus is, all right, and represents everything, everything, I mean everything excluding nothing, all right, is man is a manifestation of prophecy. His, his entire life is a manifestation. So is your life. If you're walking in accordance, amen, to God's de desired plan and agenda for your life, your life, there are no coincidences in your life. So is a church God has called you to build. If God ever called you to do something, all right, that thing, okay, is captured in prophecy, all right? If God brings somebody into your life as a relationship to work with or to marry, it's prophecy because prophecy, you understand, carries the objectives, carries the prophetic agenda. Prophecies are coming to bring to pass. They are coming to tell you this is God's plan for your life and these are the things you need to do, align yourself with for X, Y, Z to come to pass. Absolutely important. I hope this concept, amen, is, is, is clear to us. So we see all right, this, the 70 weeks of Daniel's prophecy divided into three major parts. We said the first part, all right, is the rebuilding of Jerusalem. And that we saw happen when? 1947, if I'm not mistaken, when, you know, uh, Israel, you know, uh, got uh, independence, all right? So, we're now seeing, if you will, the last part of that prophecy now coming to pass. This was, of course, we've dealt with, you know, Jerusalem being rebuilt, uh, Jesus coming, all right? We've, we, are, we, are now, we have now entered the second phase of, remember, Jerusalem was, was also judged again, was scattered. This is not the first judgment. We've seen the second judgment, you understand? Scattered all across the land, you understand? And uh, 1947, we began to see Israel be restored as a nation. Yes. The moment Israel, all right, yes, got our independence, that triggered another fulfillment, if you will, of another 70 weeks. And this is the last lap of the 70 weeks that is going to lead us into, if you will, the final point of the prophecy, which speaks of uh, um, the last week of tribulation. So we can confidently, confidently, based on what we've seen, say that we are in the last lap of, you know, Daniel's prof you know, prophecy. And of course, when you begin to look at many of the activities that is being shaping up in Jerusalem, you will actually agree because one of the things that we 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 we, we, uh, we are going to see is the rebuilding of the temple. That concept is always very important. That rebuilding of the temple, the restoration of you know uh, um, sacrifice, yes, and we know that Israel has been pushing for that. All the things that will allow that prophecy to come to pass basically are set in place. They're already set in place. So we can agree that we are in that last lap. Okay. I just thought I should chip that in. So while the, inter while the interpretation may vary, of course, from various theolo theologians and all of that, there is a common understanding, all right, that 70 weeks basically means... 49 years and we like we said Israel came you know got independent 1947 I believe it's 47 I, I want to believe it's 1947 all right so 
So you've seen basically the fulfillment of, you know, uh, the prophecy. In fact, we're seeing the fulfillment of the third day or yes, we can call it the third day of the last day. In fact, the right word is the third day because remember that, that Daniel's prophecy are in three dimension. And that's why we, we, when you hear the word the third day, basically that is what we are referring to. All right. So basically the church is in the third day because the nation of Israel is in the third day. Let's keep that in mind. So the rebuilding of Jerusalem, 62 weeks. 62 weeks representing 434 years period until the coming of the Messiah. The last week, the last week or the last week, which represents seven years, a period of tribulation. So basically we can track, we can say the church is in this 62 weeks period now. All right. This is where we are. This period of 62 weeks, the 430 uh, uh, four years period until the coming of the Messiah. We're talking about the second coming of the Messiah. Before that period, you're going to, of course, we're going to track the seven years. All right. Between that period, we're going to have this last seven weeks. This, excuse me. Yes. Uh, this last seven years, which is, a, which is the last week, remember, of Daniel's 70 uh, years prophecy. I hope this is not too technical, but I hope you, you understand. So we are in the last, we're going to, where we have, we have not entered the last of the last, but we are, amen, in that second, remember, we've passed the restoration of uh, of the of Jerusalem, the rebuilding of Jerusalem, not the temple, the rebuilding of Jerusalem, the rebuilding of the Jerus of Jerusalem sets the platform, of course, for the rebuilding of the temple. Now we know that that is already amen, an issue right now, right now in Jerusalem. Everybody knows that. <laughs> we know that, and that is what is triggering the current war that is going on in Jerusalem. All right, between Hamas and Israel, all of that is speaking to that temple. That is the reason. It's not the fact that you know certain people went, you know, Hamas went to the reason why Hamas, at least from what they've said, the reason why they went to kill and did what they did, all right, was to prevent Israel, all right, from doing what they want to do in terms of you know, uh, uh, the, you know, the resuscitation of. You know the daily sacrifice, which they believe, okay, is is going to desecrate, you know, their 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 worship as you know as Muslim on that holy ground where they built their mosque. Are you getting this? All of these are things we need to track. We need to understand. Thank you, Father. So Scripture is coming to pass before our very eyes. That's the most important thing. In case you are there, you're just living life. You're just doing your own thing. Scripture, we are in the midst of the fulfillment of the last week prophecy of Daniel. All right. There's something that this guy said. John uh, uh, Welvard. John Welvard states the prophecy as a whole is one of the most remarkable prediction in the entire Bible. Of course, it has to be. Interpreters of all school of thoughts have recognized that the prophecy has a messianic character. We can't doubt that. This last lap, okay, is going to usher in some very, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 I don't want to use radical, but we're going to be seeing some rapid, you know, prophetic fulfillment. In fact, where we are right now, the things that are happening right now, you know, they are shrouded, you know, in high level prophetic activity. Everything we can, we can confidently say that all that is happening right now, all right, yes, till the coming of Jesus are going to be rapid force, rapid, you know, fulfillment, amen, of prophecy. So we cannot afford to be doing anything in this season just by our own, you know, uh, 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 desired interest. We have to be tracking the heart of God. 
what would you, if God is asking you to do anything or you need to do anything, including choosing a mate to marry, you cannot just, you know, look at kind of fleshy thing and go and join us. You have to be tracking God because everything right now, like I said, are connected to prophetic, you know, activation. It's like prophecies are just coming to pass. When you listen to, you know, news, you, you will see prophecies coming to pass. Oftentimes, you, you will know, even the newscaster and the news anchor will not tell you, but prophecy is coming to all of the issues of climate and all of that that we're seeing happening. They are speaking into a dimension, you understand, that we cannot divorce from prophetic fulfillment. No matter how we want to prove that they are just scientific, they are just nature, you know, of course, scripture speaks of nature, you know, yes, prophecy, pro, you know. You know, nature or right, is connected to prophecy. In the days of Noah, all right, one a scientist would have said, "Ah, you know, this is just some tsunami. This is just some God knows what." They can give a you know a, a scientific you know a, 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 a definition to you know to the flood. But we know that the flood is a manifestation of God's judgment. Are you getting the point that I'm making? The, you know, when you begin to see things happen. You know, they will come and give you, you know, their scientific, you know, view. You know, have you, have you, have you, have you watched news that when something is happening or something terrible happens, what do they do? They don't go and go, call a, you know, a prophet to come and give, the, to come and give a prophetic, you know, a, a, a understanding of what's going on. No, they look for some, you know, a, a intelligent guy in some university or some professor. I see that they do that often in, in South African, you know, uh, you know, news uh, media. They get some professor, they get God knows who to come and give an analysis. But this is, amen, a powerful prophetic, you know, fulfillment. But where you go and look for somebody who who really does not have an understanding of what is going on, but he comes and speak because you know he must speak from his his position of. Of, of knowledge and understanding because that is what you understand the state or the nation recognize when God is moving in the land you don't you don't get you know some uh, newscaster to come and tell oh let's go and look for you know prophet Isaiah to come and give us a, a, a narrative of what is going on which of course we've got a voice we, we have something to say but they will never call you because they do not recognize you as an authentic analyst and I don't blame them to a certain degree. When you look at what we've done in the church. <laughs> oh, Lord, I love you, Lord. All right, so modern application. So I, I hope that concept of understanding the 70 weeks, you know, is clear to us. Because I think, I, I, I think, I, I will score myself, you know, uh, you know, 70% in terms of trying to explain that and giving some perspective and understanding of what Daniel 70 weeks you understand is if you don't understand it go back to the uh, um you know to the teaching again after we are done L listen to it again until you get it because i know you will not just get it by just the things that i'm saying right you will need to go back and listen to it again and of course make your own you know research you know make your own findings but just make sure that the things you are saying you, you are looking into are aligning to what the scripture you understand i've said because what i have done as i've sought not to go outside the boundary of what god amen is saying to us okay modern application of course there's a modern application while interpreting you know while interpretation may vary this prophecy encourages the church to view history and current events in the light of god's timeline that's just what i've been explaining you can see you know, because all of this thing is in my brain. So I, I didn't need to even look at, you know, uh, 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 the slide to understand what I'm talking about. Because, you know, you've sat down, you've looked at this thing, you you understand what God is saying. We've got to understand the world we live in today is a world that is on, that is unfolding, amen, true, powerful, prophetic timeline. Yes. Importance of Bible study. The complexity of this prophecy underscores the need for diligent studies of scripture. We can't shy away from that. We have to be students of God's word. All right. Model of prayer. Daniel's prayer provides a template for effective intercessory. We've dealt with this. All right. 
we've dealt with this. All right. Eschatological awareness. The prophecy encourages believers to live with the awareness of God's unfolding plan for the end time, for the last day. Very important. Please, please, I beg of you. Always, when you wake up in the morning, always seek to understand, God, what's your plan for today in terms of your prophetic fulfillment for our day? I want to see. I want to walk. I want to understand. I want to engage myself. I want to be available. Use me as an instrument. Yes, that 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 is part of the unf- unfolding nature of your prophetic counsel. Because that's, I mean, people must do it. They use Daniel. They're using people that are there to fulfill when the heart of believers align to the heart of God. God then can use them as instrument to bring to pass, to bring to manifestation, to bring to the full his intention. But when we dis- when we are disconnected, we are disengaged. You know, we just do church. We just, hallelujah, praise God. We just church from morning till night. But we are not, amen, involving ourselves. We are not interacting, you understand, with the prophetic season, with the demand of God, with the requirement of God. The, the, the nature of the day is not adjusting us, amen. Yes, in terms of how we talk, how we interact, who we relate to, where we go, all of that, then we will be left behind. This is like in the days of, you know, of Noah. Noah was engaging in building God's intention, but there were people just doing their own thing. We don't want to do our own thing. We want to do the things of God. We want to interact and relate, amen, with the heart of God. That is how we track, amen, yes, eschatological uh, 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 um, awareness or intentions. All right? Cultural engagement. Understanding God's timeline for history can inform how Christians engage with and influence their society. That's just what I've explained. When we understand that, oh, we are in the last lap, all right, we are part of a people witnessing the coming to pass of Daniel's, you understand, 70 weeks, all right, and we know that we are also playing a role, what do we do? That, you know, you know, enhances us or encourages us to do what? To do what we need to do in terms of evangelism, yes, in terms of representation, in terms of, you understand, building in accordance to divine pattern. Uh, when you know that you are in the season where God's prophetic intention, amen, needs to come to pass, and yet you are still building something that is looking like the Babylonian system. I mean, that means that you are not, you're not tracking. It means that you are not following. You're still living your life, you understand, doing your own thing. Living your life, you know, based on your own desire. It means you're not tracking. You're not walking in the understanding of that, you know, when Daniel realized that, okay, that 70 years that was prophesied has come. He, he Bible said he turned to the Lord. I love that word. That, that word turn, all right, is the word metanel. Is the word, is the Greek word metanel. It means, all right, to repent, to turn to the Lord. This, this is to have a 360 degree. In other words, you, you change priority, you change lifestyle, you change behavior. You, 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 you can't be going to bed, all right, with all kinds of garbages in your mind, in your life. You can't be watching all kinds of garbages in the days we live in. You can't be giving yourself to all kinds of ungodly behavior. That's, you see, knowing that we were, we've been tracking the scripture. Let me read that scripture quickly for you. Is somebody listening to what I'm saying? This is how we know that we are we are indeed aware of the seasons that heaven has brought us into. <clears throat> Let, let's look at that scripture that we've been tracking for a while. Uh, uh, Romans chapter 13 verse 11 says, And do this understanding the present time. 
That is what Daniel understood. He understood, amen, that what present time means. He understood, amen, the nature of the prophetic season is being ushered into. And do this. When you understand the time, it changes what you do. It changes your belief. It changes your attitude. It changes your, your posture. It changes your prayer life. It changes how you study. It changes, amen, where you go. It changes, you understand, yes, who are your friends? When you understand that you shift away, that eh, eh, wait a minute, we're in the last lap. <clears throat> we're in the last lap of you know God's prophetic intention. So I, 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 I no no no, I'm no longer coming. Sorry, no 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 no. no. You're looking at time and saying, no, no, I'm expecting some visitors. You know, it's like you're expecting certain visitor. You begin to like, okay, no, no, things has to change now. Mm, yes, you cannot continue the way, you know, things, things are as if nothing is happening. No, something is happening. And do this understanding the present time, the hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber because our salvation that was salvation speaks to the the prophetic nearness of god's agenda our salvation is nearer now than when we first believe yes we can we can you can take this scripture to interpret daniel 70 you know uh, uh, 70 weeks excuse me the night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. That's it. So when you understand that, you cannot be swallowed by the culture. You cannot be swallowed by Babylon. You cannot give in, you understand, to the narrative of Babylon. No. Amen. Amen. Perseverance in prayer. Gabriel swift, you know, response to Daniel's prayer. Can you see? The moment Daniel began to pray, what happened? They sent Gabriel with a message. Gabriel said a message was released. A message was sent out. So the prayer of Daniel triggered a message. They said, okay, somebody finally all right, is understanding that the time truly has come. So let's send it out a message. Let's, let's begin to, you know, rearrange things. Gabriel's swift response, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Gabriel's swift response to Daniel's prayer encourages persistence in seeking God. All right, so that is the end of Daniel's chapter, chapter 9. Hopefully tomorrow we start chapter 10. I hope, you know, what we have, <clears throat> excuse me, looked at this evening has really given us uh, uh, insight into what we are dealing with and like I said please go back to this concept of the 70 weeks again now you understand what the 70 weeks means and how we can interact or relate with that 70 weeks okay it, it's it's a number that speaks of you know God's prophetic timeline how God moves and deals particularly with nation with the nation of Israel but also with his church okay so we want to thank God for what the Spirit of the Lord has really uh, helped us to deal with tonight. I hope this word has brought insight, understanding to you. I'm done for tonight. Thank you so very much, everyone. Please do consider, you know, supporting this work. If the Lord has touched your heart, if the Lord is touching your heart, if you are being blessed by what we are sharing, please do support this work so that I also can be encouraged in doing what I need to do because basically this is what I do this is my office this is my calling this is my you know ministry so support what we're doing and of course the Lord will support you will continue to encourage you please take uh, down the uh, um, the information and ask the Lord what can I do you know in terms of assisting this work so that you know this man can continue to do what he needs to do Thank you, everyone. God bless you for being part of our live broadcast tonight. Hopefully, I'll see you again. Have yourself a wonderful evening. We'll see you again. God bless. Bye-bye.